Okay. <laughs> that certainly got some heat on it, that one. That one was dogged. All right, Hayden, so what we're going to do here, mate, we've got a par four. We're sitting at about probably 310 meters away from that green. It's just on the other side of those trees there. Beautiful elevated tee shot so we can see the full extent of the flight that we've got going on here. Yeah. Uh, with your brand new driver that you're very impressed with, with the, the spin rate and the new launch conditions. Yeah. So when you were doing your, your testing relative to what you had previously, how much of an increase in both distance and speed were you seeing? Yeah, so I used the uh, Rad Speed driver mm. um, by Cobra for as long as it was out um, and then shifted over to this, did some testing and picked up uh, just under 12 metres in carry yeah, crazy. and dropped just over 500 revs in spin, which is, I've always been like a higher spin player with driver mm. um, and always tried to get it down as much as I can. So to see a change in a head yeah. without changing anything else to drop 500 revs is incredible so yeah that's awesome that's yeah. awesome and uh i see that we've got a pretty similar shaft here i got the 6x what do you got in there yeah 7x okay, um 7X. So same that's... other than that it's all the same isn't it mentis and then the head i've got this set at nine degrees ltd x ls and yourself yeah i'm the same nine degrees um i've been playing with a little bit at eight um it's coming out probably longer at eight but i'm gaming it at nine at the minute just because probably carries a bit more yeah. important when I'm playing For sure. um, until I've got that control at eight degrees and I might chuck it down to play, so. All right, mate, so we got the uh, we got the launch monitor set up here. We've got the data ready to go. Let's knock some down there. We're gonna watch you try and see the most that you can possibly get out of this drive. See if we can drive that green down there for us, mate. <laughs> and then you're gonna talk us through your distance keys. Righto. Yeah, that's an awesome flight, eh? And t talk about what is the general ball flight that you're looking for yep. in regards to curvature. Meters. Yeah, so that was um, that was my miss hit, and that was my mm -hmm. probably my common miss hit, especially on this left right wind. Mm -hmm. um, so that was low heel, and I think what did she say? Two hundred eighty meters carry. So yeah, exactly. So if we're looking at here, club head speed was one hundred and twenty six point five mile per hour. Ball speed was just a touch under there. Uh, 180 and carry was 280 there. So yep. coming off very hot off the face, right? Um, smash factor 1.42, and that's due to the fact that you hit it slightly off the, the heel, off you said? Off the heel, yeah. Yep, yep. and uh, angle of attack was 1.4 degrees up. Do you yep. play around with that at all? Um, not really. I think if I'm driving it poorly, mm. um, I'll probably start to see it going a little bit too far right. Okay. Um, in which case I might hit, try to hit it a little bit more up on it when I'm practicing and a little bit more left on it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of brings me back into my parameters and then I can go and play from there. Okay, great, let's go again. But yeah, general flight, I'm, I'm always trying to hit it generally pretty straight, maybe 10 meters either way, depending on the hole. Um, so this one, I probably want to ideally draw one in there to that, to that green. It's got some serious heat. Yeah, that one was a bit stronger. Okay, so looking at the numbers coming off the face there, you could tell that the ball flight, low spin, right? It launched a little bit higher off the face, yep. but the wind didn't affect that at all. No. So that carried 298 yep. meters right there. Uh, slightly more down on the ball there, so you were one degree down. Better strike though, it felt like off the face. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and your club head speed was 127.4, ball speed 181. So yep. really the differences between a slight miss hit and even that shot there, which is tremendous. It's, it's still only a couple of mile per hour. Yeah, it's not, and it's not much difference. And you can see it in the flight as well, that first one mm. low and out of the heel, it still held um, even on that left right wing as well. So mm. um, yeah, it's really impressive with the, I think the lowering of the backspin, mm. um, you know, obviously keeps that miss hit more online. So. Yeah, and you, you can't undervalue the importance of the, the combination of not only working on your technique, right? And improving the, the movement of your body, the arms and the club to produce a stronger ball flight with your driver, but also if you complement that with the right technology, you can see, like you were saying, picking up the extra distance that you got, the lower spin, the better launch. Yep. You can really get some some huge increases in a couple of areas that we see here. And obviously at your level, when you're playing professional events, those one percenters, they make all the difference. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, it's uh it's been a it's been a massive, massive change for me. And and as I said, I don't feel like I'm doing anything any different. Mm -hmm. Um it's just flying better, so I love it. Can't complain about that. Let's go again. 
I want to see that carry pop over 300 meters. Give one a rip then, eh? Yeah, awesome. Really good, really good. That so was a little heely again, probably. Left edge of the green there. So club speed 129, definitely more speed there. We did lose a little bit of distance, so yep. 284. Yep. Uh, so that's just really coming from the slight heel strike. Yeah, there. yep, definitely. But you, you look at the, so that flew 284. So you look at the dispersion though, it's still tight relative to the amount of speed that you create. And what we know about the professional, right, with the average club head speed on the PGA Tour is probably sitting around 114, 115. So you're up there with, with some of the biggest with the way that the golf club's then moving, but your dispersion has the potential to be a lot wider if your technique and your proficiency of strike combination of equipment isn't there to complement that. Yep. So for the fact that you create that much speed, you do miss hit it like that straight off the bat, you know you've mishit it and it still goes that accurate. That's, yep. that's great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and no, I'm not always playing at my max speed either. I feel like I generally like to play, hmm. you know, probably six or seven miles under my max. Yeah. Um, and then when I get maybe a par five downwind or a drivable par four that I might not be able to get to, I've, I've got that in the tank. Yeah, great. Um, but I do like to probably tone it back to 85, 90% when I play and just hit it in the fairway because it still goes far enough, so. Yeah, for sure. We'll get the speed up on this one. Let's do it. Over 130, plus 300 carry. Righto. It's gonna be pretty close. Really strong. That was nice. So flight time of that golf ball sitting at 8.37 seconds. Is that a lot? That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, so club head speed sitting around about the same. We got 128 then. And then the carry was about 290, 292 on that one as well. Yep. So ball speed 183, smash factor around 1.3. And you actually hit down on that one a little bit more. So okay. that's, that's, that's where you lost a little bit of that distance. Yep. So if we can get that angle of attack, just sitting a little bit more up. So it was four degrees down there. Was it? Yeah. Okay. So you get a little bit more of an ascending angle of attack. I think this- A little this, bit um, higher initial launch and it'll lower that spin bit. I think this wind here is playing with me a little bit, so. Just buffeting it. And that's, that's an interesting point to note from a, a game perspective and actually putting this all into an effect, right? Is there's so many players out there just trying to max everything out, as in they think they've got to get the most amount of hitting up on their driver to get the, the greatest amount of distance and potential. But what happens when you do do that to a degree is you're actually just rehearsing or you're practicing something all the time that may not necessarily be gameable. Yeah. So the way that you've actually played that, you can see that, okay, sure, we're not getting the most out of what you potentially could. It's in the center of the fairway. It's probably on the green. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's just interesting with, with this wind, it's hard to fully release and, and let everything mm. go on a, on a wind that's into off a left when mm. there's trouble left. Um, you know, you want to probably hit that little miss hit and, you know, hit it front right of the green and, and you take that as opposed to a par five down off the right yeah. um, where you can give it all you've got and it's just going to knock the ball back down into play. So. These, these conversations with tour players, right, and you hear the way that you just articulated what you were just describing there is, it's amazing that the level in which the tour player thinks regarding all these shots and all the little variables, whereas most amateur golfers get frustrated when they don't hit it perfect, but sometimes a professional actually knows that a misstruck shot is the right shot. It's better, yeah. Yeah, 100%. I've got a whole lot this. I mean, I'd, I'd be happy with that shot all, all day. You know, it's probably yeah. front right to middle of the green. Um, and, you know, I'm going to make three, so. Great. Okay, let's go again. We'll really give one a rip here, eh? Yeah. We'll see the most amount of club head speed. Okay. Yeah, so that definitely launched a lot higher. Flight time. Picking up there with some of the longest I've seen. So 8.37 seconds up there. Club head speed got all the way to 130 mile per hour there. We made it. That is some seriously good stuff. Now, <laughs> what we're going to do here, um, I'm going to actually just get you hitting a little bit more up on the golf ball. We're going to see if we can kind of max it out. Yep. So negating gameplay, we're going to go for like total distance. So we're going to tee this one up just to whisk it more. Yep. Right. When you set up to the ball for me, I'm just going to make a slight adjustment to our setup. Now, to get the angle of attack for you to try and lower that spin, higher launch, get some more carry out of it. When you set up to the ball for me, perfect. Just want to feel a little bit more tilt of your upper body back and behind it, right? So usually when players do this, they feel really stuck back behind it. They feel like they're gonna hit it a mile up into the air, but to utilize the driver effectively for the recreational golfer at home is 
you more or you're going to get far more consistency with your ball striking with the driver if we do hit it a little bit more up than down just to the fact that you're going to reduce the spin yep. now hayden's a very high level golfer obviously a professional so the way that he would approach gaming this would be slightly different but for the purposes of maxing the speed out what i want you to do is i just want you to get a little bit more tilt behind it yep. and then just get the feeling that the club is just trying to rise slightly through the golf ball similar to our fairway bunker shot yeah. video that we were doing where you said you're trying to thin it slightly yep. i want you to visualize that the club's just rising slightly through okay. the moment of impact cool as much speed as you can just and a little bit more tilted address a bit further forward in the stance at all yeah you could do that yep yep okay <laughs> That certainly got some heat on it, that one. That one was tongued. Flight time, 8.22 seconds. Club head speed of 133 mile per hour. Ball speed of 185. Carry, 300.3 meters. Now we're talking. All right, mate. So I want you to teach me how to do that. Yep. All, All right. right, let's do it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to... We'll switch positions. We'll switch positions. You can coach the coach. And... If you're out there playing a pro-am yep. and you're playing with a couple of guys and they're like, Hayden, I would love nothing more right, than to crush a drive over 250. Yeah. Right. So what are some setup keys that you would get them doing to increase the likelihood that they could get more distance with their driver? So when you really want to rip one like yep. that, what do you think about? Yeah. So for starters, um, you know, when, when the golfer gets into, into setup, um, you know, your, your everyday golfer generally uh you know is standing quite square um, for a nine shot right they get their upper and lower body a little bit too much on top of the ball like this so then with driver seeing as the ball's teed up what do we need to do different yeah well i think a common issue um with driver with with your, your everyday player you might play within a pro-am uh -huh. um guys that play once a week is it's a longer club and yeah. it's off a tee so rather than people feeling like they've got to get through the ball often they'll kind of drag the club away and throw the club at it through impact. And that mm. causes that high right shot and, and the low pulls that we see. Mm. Um, so something that's that's pretty important is getting into a good posture, mm -hmm. making sure the ball's nice and far forward in your stance so that you can continue all the way through the shot. Great. And making sure that you set up with enough tilt at address. A little bit of angle. To yeah. help the driver release through impact. Yeah, perfect. So just for the guys at home here, what Hayden's describing there is just in the setup position, we generally see amateur golfers set up to their driver very similar to their irons where our upper and lower body would be on top of each other. Now, seeing as the ball's teed up, we need a little bit more of an ascending angle of attack where the club's rising. So we need a little bit of what's called this side bend like this. So you're gonna get your upper body and just gonna lean a little bit away from the target or a great way to actually get into that position is when you set up to it, you grab your back hand, place it on your back leg and just slide it down until it touches your kneecap like that. That'll place this beautiful, where you can see it's almost like a straight line structure between my lead arm and the club shaft all things being equal, that's gonna help us hit a little bit more up on it, right? So Perfect. we're gonna use that. We're gonna place the ball a little bit further forward, yep. right? I'm gonna have a little bit of tilt with my body, get into this position. Yeah, love so it. So your, what was your club head speed then, mate? One, three, three point two. Okay, and carry was 300, all right. Yeah. Let me see if I can loosen up the old wing. <laughs> Sounded good. Sounded good. I wonder how much speed I've got on there. I'm gonna have to add a little bit to that one, I reckon. 124.9, that's uh that's not shy, it's pretty good, pretty good swing there. 124, we got ball speed nowhere near yours. Toe carry was 273. 273. So you've only got me by 30 meters, that all. God. <laughs> all right. That's so, right, that was your first attempt. What was my angle of attack on that one, Hayden? Uh it was 2.4 up. Okay, great. I'm gonna go more up, more tilt. And I really feel like I'm gonna stretch this one out. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice. That was ripped. I think that's as good as I can possibly do. It's lost in the orbit, it's gone so far. So club head speed. Was down a couple of miles an hour, but your ball speed was up. Okay, 179, that's good. Carry was up to 277. 277. So you've only got me by 23 meters. All right, lucky last. <laughs> I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to try and rip this one as hard as I possibly can. And you were two down on that, so I'd like to see a bit more tilt from you in this one. A little bit more tilt. It did rise a little bit. Okay. Yep. Ball forward, a little bit more angle. That was nice. How are you feeling? 
I'm feeling feels good great off one. the club face. I'm feeling good about this one. Feels great off the club face. Didn't have much left in the tank after that one. One twenty six point six. There you go. You're up. Carry was down a little bit from was a little bit of a mishit. Yep. Yep. But the speed was up by what probably four mile an hour with that out of tilt there. There we go, mate. Awesome tips to help us get a little bit more distance out of our game. Good Thanks stuff, mate. Cheers.